Okay, so today we have Tobias here to speak to us about the SCP uh, Hotel, not politics. So uh, hopefully you all read the tweet this week or the uh, announcement that went out on the lunch. Uh, it gave a lot of great information about the SCP. A couple things that were not on that uh, that I found interesting was that the fireplace that is in their lobby area was the original fireplace from 1928 when the hotel was constructed. And it was made from locally sourced lava rocks. So I love that they kept that in there. Uh, the vision of the Soul Community Planet, which is what SCP stands for, is to make the world around us a better place by serving those who value personal wellness, social good, and the environment. And I thought that was interesting. It came from their CEO. Um, and so after, it took them about two years, seven million dollars to renovate that hotel. I think they didn't necessarily know what they were getting into until they got into some of the walls, but luckily they stuck with it and uh, were able to create a beautiful space for people to enjoy locally and from out of the area. The other day when I was in there, I like to go in, I like rooftop, I like Wayfair, but I like to meet in there for meetings and I never noticed there's a beautiful sign, you can't see this because it's black and white, but there's a beautiful sign i would never noticed that hangs when you go in there, and it's uh, like a chalk. The sign's beautiful, but then they update the numbers on it, and so it says every stay does good, and then it lists youth. They've supported 187,000 youth. Nights of Light, 139K, I'm not sure what that means, so that'll be one of my questions. <laughs> Trees, they've planted 196,000. Plastic water bottles, eliminated 502,000. Solar energy produced 401 MWH. Pounds of CO2 emissions saved 577K. Pounds of food waste Save from landfill 16,000 pounds. So I've never seen this in a hotel. I thought it was interesting that they basically are saying this is you know what we do in not just having a hotel for people to come and stay at, but to give back to the community. So Tobias will tell us more. Tobias Feldman, I'm the general manager of SCP uh, Redmond. Um, I'm uh, also on city council, as you mentioned, and it's really nice not to have to do a stump speech today, so I appreciate the thing. It seems like uh, I've been doing those a lot lately. Uh, but I'm happy to talk about the hotel. Uh, it's been kind of uh, a love, uh, I wouldn't say love-hate, it's been a lot of love uh, being able to be the steward of that hotel. I, I, I say steward because that hotel's been there, there a lot longer than I have. Um, there, there's been a hotel on that spot since 1906. It was one of the first structures in Redmond originally. It was a two-story wood building. They had a stable out back for your horses, and it burned down in 27, unfortunately. And then the structure you see today was built in 1928. Uh, so uh, the original lava fireplace, um, all the wood beams and everything is, is original. So it was a hotel for most of its life, but in uh, 20, in the early 2000s, it kind of fell into disrepair. It was going to take a lot of money to renovate it to get it up to what you would have as a standard as a hotel. Uh, plus, when you change things, you have to get it up to code, and it hadn't been up to code for a long, long time. So, as she said, seven seven million dollar uh, renovation. It started at, out as one year and three and a half. And they found that there was a void between the, the floors, about two feet, and code is anything over 18 inches you have to sprinkle, so that in case of a fire. So there are six floors of sprinklers in a four-story building currently on that thing. So with that, the budget doubled, and the time it took to renovate it doubled as well. Uh, so we were able to open up uh, our doors from the rooftop in July of 2019. We opened the, the hotel rooms in December of 2019. Uh, and then there was a global pandemic, you know, perfect timing for everything. Uh, luckily, we had great, great support from our local community. So uh, we were only closed for about a month and a half, and then we opened up uh, May of 2020. We opened back up in May of 2020, and we were immediately full. And we've been uh, staying full for most of the time since. Um, 
Over the years, we've added some new uh, amenities to the property that I wanted to talk to you about today. Um, so not only are we a hotel, uh, and not only do we have a rooftop, but we also have Forbidden's Market, which is open daily from starting at 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, and it goes until 2. So we have great uh, coffee. Uh, we see a lot of uh, familiar faces that have had coffee there and come in, got a smoothie, or enjoyed our space. Uh, and then during COVID, we had two tenants that unfortunately didn't make it through uh, COVID. They're still alive, right? The businesses didn't, <laughs> didn't, <laughs> the businesses didn't survive. Uh, uh, AK's tea room uh, was uh, right in our lobby, uh, and then uh, she wasn't able to make it work. So when that uh, she vacated, we actually uh, turned that into the Wayfair Bar. So that took a, about a year of renovation, but turned into a, a beautiful lobby bar that has handcrafted cocktails. Um, we change them uh, seasonally, uh, and uh, we try to use our bartender's uh, experience. So usually we put up this big list of drinks that we want to add, and then we, the fun part of my job is I get to taste all of those and we <laughs> give notes uh, and see what we want to add to it. And uh, we're about to do that same thing this next month. We'll be having a menu change in the uh, middle of October for all of our restaurants, but specifically for the bar as well. Uh, and then Terra Kitchen. Um, so I just heard talk to someone at a previous event uh, and they still thought Terra was a vegetarian restaurant. It was. Uh, last July, we switched back and we added uh, locally sourced uh, proteins. So we uh, sourced from Didi Ranch uh, up in, in Terrebonne. Uh, we sourced from uh, a butcher up in Madras uh, that sources from local farms as well. So uh, Terra Kitchen is a sit-down restaurant. Uh, they're open Tuesday through Saturday um, from uh, 4 o'clock until 9 o'clock, uh, basically. And it's become one of the nicest restaurants in, in Redmond. Uh, very locally sourced, handcrafted. We try to make everything from the ranch dressing that you're having on the way to uh, a complicated Mediterranean dish that our, our chef is, is known for. Uh, very, very delicious. I know I've seen some of you in there as well. Tell your friends about it, but it's been becoming more work. We're sold out most nights now uh, nowadays, so opentable.com if you want to make a reservation <coughs> there. Uh, but we did both uh, Wayfair and Terra at the same time period. Um, great additions to uh, our, our property. Um, last thing uh, I'll mention is a new feature that we're going to be opening hopefully in the next couple of weeks is uh, we had another tenant on the north side on Evergreen uh, that was a photo studio um, and they uh, uh, ended their lease at the beginning of the year uh, and we're going to turn that into a co-working space. Um, so uh, if anyone knows what co-working is, is basically people that work from home or, or work remotely want a place that they are using their house, they don't have the distraction of kids or dogs or or all the stuff where they have a place to go, where they can work. We have fiber optic internet to the hotel, so really fast internet, and a whole bunch of amenities along with networking with your fellow uh, people that work remotely, uh, creating that community uh, of people that can work together. So hopefully opening up the first week of October, uh, they'll be on the north side of the building uh, on Evergreen. Uh, we're gonna start pre-selling uh, some of those memberships, and if, you want to, if you're around, we want to give you a quick tour, we've got, uh, don't need a hard hat, but a hard hat tour of, of the space uh, as it is currently. So, those are some of the amenities that we have to offer at our hotel, along with we have event space as well. Uh, a, a room that can fit up to like 40 people comfortably for most sets, uh, more if you're just doing a theater style set. We have a, a boardroom, yeah, and then new conference space, or the new uh, co working space will have another conference room, and yeah, a, a small creator room. So, Podcasting is very popular in our days, so we have a room which will be soundproof so that you can do some recording in there if you need to. What questions can I answer for you? I have two. One is, are you guys going to do a five-year uh, open celebration? I know you were hired at the end of 19, so you're coming up on your five years at the hotel. Are you guys doing anything for that? We haven't uh, talked about it. Uh, I know we're going to do uh, 100 year because 1928 was when it was uh, first built. So we want to do the uh, 2028 uh, big celebration to celebrate the 100 years. Um, but as a, as a company, we haven't talked about doing a five year celebration, but that's a great idea. So we might look at something in December. My second question I have was, do you know how many Jews there will be located in the hotel? I know they have two down in the area of Ragnarok, but it seems to be very random on. Is there a certain thing they look for? 
Yeah, a good deal is usually the best. <laughs> uh, we're mostly on the West Coast, so we have 10 hotels currently. Um, there is Sunshine on the Coast, it's uh, our hotel. Uh, Depot Bay is a small hotel in the harbor of Depot Bay. Can you speak up a little bit? The air is okay. on, I'm sorry. So we have three hotels in Oregon. So Salishan Resort uh, on the coast near Lincoln City. Uh, we have Depot Bay, which is there's a small hotel that's in the harbor of Depot Bay. Uh, we have us uh, up here in Redmond. There's one in Colorado Springs. We have four in California, two in Mendocino, and two in Laguna Beach. And then we have one in Hilo, Hawaii, and our newest one is in Costa Rica. It's actually an eco resort that's off the grid. We need a boat to get there. And it's in this region, uh rainforest that's older than anywhere else in the world, apparently. So it's like an old uh, continent that got subducted, but there's still this little island that's a peninsula off the east coast of, or the west coast of Costa Rica. Amazing place. I haven't been there yet, but I will. Uh, so yeah, uh, they usually look for uh, part of our, our, our initiative to be, we say healthy, kind, and green, is we don't build hotels. We only take older hotels and we renovate them. The idea is we're recycling a hotel. We're not, we're not trying to build more. Um, so we look for those often distressed properties um, that have a high upside. So they're in great markets. They uh, give us an opportunity to showcase what we really like in, in our, our values. Uh, and yeah, we've had some close calls on a few other hotels, um, but the, it's all up to financial, making sure they have pencils so that we have successful hotels. Are they all boutique hotels? Like, they're all boutique. Salishan's our biggest resort that we have. They have over uh, about 200 rooms, a spa, a golf course, uh, uh, a lot of stuff. They have the full resort. Um, we might. Every place is a little bit different, and that's that's kind of the fun thing about our, our properties. They're all combined in our our, our our wanting to do good. So every state does good, um, but they all have a little bit different feel to them. It's true. I have a comment and a question. Mm -hmm. Kudos to you and the hotel. When my wife and I moved here in April of 2021, we spent our first two nights in the hotel. Our rooms are incredible. And if you don't want any electronics, you can get a room without any of that. And the restaurant, the terror restaurant and the rooftop and Wafer are incredible. The question I had is, I heard that there was a possibility of putting in infrared sauna and steam rooms in the hotel. Is anything happening with that? Yeah, probably not a steam room, but uh, we've been looking at our fitness space. Currently, we have a couple Pelotons in the TRX weight system. Um, it's expanding. <coughs> that's healthiest part of our what we want to do. And so, uh, I've actually been in talks in the last couple of weeks about getting a couple of treadmills, uh, elliptical, adding a shower to that space, and then mm -hmm. adding a bread sauna and a cold plunge in there too. And part of the membership uh, is that you can add on a fitness membership to so yes. Um, I always I look looking at the history of Redmond, uh, I wondered who the owner was or who the person was that rebuilt in nineteen twenty eight, you know? They were called the Wilsons. It was a, it was oh, a couple. Okay. Um, they were uh, they apparently made some money up in the, in Alaska. Talk about some of that was lived in Alaska. I'm from Alaska as well. Okay. Um, but the Wilsons came down and they were the they built the hotel as it is now. I have old pictures of them at the hotel. There's a binder uh, also in there that has a whole bunch of clippings okay. uh, from okay. the spokesman and different things that have shown pictures of you know, things that happened over the years. Here in downtown. Yeah. So they were actually friends with Klondike Kate, is, uh, who is also well known in the yes. area, and yes. apparently Mrs. Wilson and her would dress up every week, and she would come into to, to the hotel, and they would try to show off how wealthy they were to each other, and <laughs> they got, apparently just talk right. crap, crap to each other the whole time, and they left each other and did it every week. So. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I definitely have heard that Wilson name, so yeah. I wondered if that was. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. 
for many decades, Kiwanis met in your banquet room. Mm -hmm. Is there any talk of restoring that banquet room? Um, so the banquet room we have currently is smaller than the original one. I think we, over a hundred years, we found that walls have changed quite a bit. Uh, and so space isn't the, the way it was. Like the, the current conference room is not the old conference room. Um, it's a little bit smaller, um, but I, I know we've had inquiries about possibly holding Kiwanis there too, and we'd be interested in talking to you about it. Maybe, maybe doing that uh, um, every once in a while and having you here at the hotel. I'm happy to speak at those two. <laughs> so talk about the, the rooftop bar a little bit. I know that was a challenge. Uh, you had to do quite a bit of renovation and engineering to, to make that a possibility. Uh, could you roughly say if the return has been worth it on that? And then I also wondered why not other places downtown have a rooftop? And I, it's got to be because of the old building. You talked a little bit about that process. And sure. Yeah, so there wasn't a, um, a structure on our rooftop originally. And our owners, uh, Ken Cruz, the is, uh, is uh, they were doing a tour of the hotel and they got up to the roof and they were like, we need to have something up here because they just saw the views. And so they went and they created something that wasn't there. We actually lost a room because they had to build a whole st that staircase up there uh, and that took one room out of order. Uh, and then uh, the process of actually building up there, I, I think there were some agreements with the city that it was going to be okay. Um, but it was, a, it was, you had to do structural engineering to make sure it would hold the weight. Uh, I think they had to put some extra beams just because of that. that this, this deck is actually, the roof slopes significantly down underneath that, but so they had to have a system where it's like right on the ground on the top and then there's like a, these big arms that get bigger and bigger as you go down to make sure that's a level surface that you're sitting on. And then they had to take into account the, the weight of the soil because those are all plants, or real plants that are up there. And so it was an engineering feat to make that work. And I'm sure very expensive. So I don't know the answer to your question yeah. about if it, we got a return on it or not, yeah. but we were talking about expanding it, but structurally it didn't make sense to expand. So we pivoted on that. Well done. Really fun up there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just curiosity, uh, how the city or local environment or local economic um, outfit helped or did not help? Yeah. Not fun any of that. That's a great question. Um, so this was <clears throat> not something that I think the private sector could have done alone. Um, so uh, if everyone knows Chuck Arnold, he's uh, at the city and works with the downtown urban renewal agency, and so that was the catalyst for making this project happen. I know that the, they changed hands like every six months to a year before our investment group got into it. And then they worked with Chuck to, it became almost a 50-50 with the downtown river renewal. We got a, re, a, a reimbursable loan and we also got a low term loan on this. And it was, a, it was hey, we're gonna split this and make this work because the hotel is a linchpin for the downtown core. If that was gonna be, under disrepair and didn't, didn't work, then nothing else was going to happen around it. And you've seen what's happened since. Is since we've been in there and, and been consistent, you've seen other businesses have popped up up and down that street. Went from somewhere around a 70% um, occupancy rate in the downtown core to somewhere in 97%. Right, that's the highest it's ever been. Yeah, and they're switching hands too. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I know Double J's is probably uh, going to be closing uh, soon, uh, and something else will probably pop up in there, but all the shops are kind of uh, changing from what they were. I remember there was a quinceanera shop that's now that Cares and Woes, uh, and uh, other shops that are popping up here and there. That just That's a vibrant downtown when you see that demand of there's not vacancy anymore. It's like, oh, I want to have my business downtown because I see that there are people coming, there's people walking up and down the streets which wasn't there five years ago. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting in the hotel during COVID, well, it was COVID too, but, uh, and there was just, it was a ghost. I could walk out in the middle of the street and not see anyone for a few minutes, so, yeah. So a couple things, do you have, you know, <coughs> occupancy uh, stats, um, and then any data on uh, local, like, staycation type versus people from, let's say, I don't know, more than 50 miles, or if you track any of that, do you have those? Oh, we, we track all, all yeah. those uh, As a business, that's that's your 
your data. You want to cater to the people that are coming, basically. Um, so first, occupancy. We run uh, over 80% occupancy year round, which is really, really high for the, this industry. If you get anything above 50, typically you're doing all right. Especially when you have a down season where you're not getting a whole lot of people. So we do very well in our occupancy, and we are the rate leader in Redmond. Um, we just have a unique experience that you can't um, do at the sleep in or uh, at the comfort suites or things like that that are more box hotels as we call them. Um, so we command a little bit more in rate. So uh, occupancy, we're doing really well. Uh, mix of business, uh, we have a true good mix. There's not one single thing that's driving everything. I would say that th our bread and butter is our business travel. Um, so the basics of the world, uh, the airport, and firefighters during the, the, the fire season. So anyone that's coming in, we do a lot of government rate uh, type things. So Monday through Friday, that's typically what we get. In the summer, obviously we're going to take a lot of transient guests, which means people that are coming in for vacations or for very special occasions. Uh, farewell festival, they're paying really high rates <coughs> to come and see that because there's, there's no occupancy anywhere in the region because there's 30 some thousand people trying to do that same thing. So, I answered your question. Perfect. What else? Ellen? So, when I was in the third grade, Mrs. Clapp's class in Jesse Hill School, we all walked down to the hotel to take a tour, and Mr. Wilson, I think the son, who actually lived a block down the street from where I was grew up by the hospital, um, so he took us in the elevator up to the roof. But he singled me out and said, Alan, could you hold the open door button so the elevator stays here? Mm -hmm. So I didn't get to see the roof. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun trip back in 1950, whatever that was. Yeah, and that's, uh, we get a lot of stories like that from people coming saying, I got married in front of this fireplace. Or, uh, I remember having you know, class trips to here or different things. So there's some really crazy stories about a monkey that lived on property for a number of years to <laughs> and then possibly witnessed a murder. I got a few stories <laughs> kind of out there, but it's fun to be a part of that history and, and part of that story as we move forward. And the whole idea is this is going to be here for a yeah. lot longer than I'm going to be alive, hopefully, too. How, how many rooms available again? There are 48 rooms. 48. So very, very small in, in hotel terms. So we want more. So. We should, if we could manufacture more, we would. So. Any other questions? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. 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 Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I want to thank you all for uh, being a part of Kiwanis. I know it's a great organization. It really helps kids. I have two kids of my own, eight and five, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of work to, to take care of them in the best of time. So. Well, you're always welcome to join. Right. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll see you at the forum soon. Yes. 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 Thank you. Bring your kids to Oktoberfest Saturday. Yes. yes. It's free, yeah, it's free, and there's tons of stuff for the kids. <laughs> in um, on honor of Tobias and the wonderful customer service that he and his staff uh, give to our community, people will forget what you said, forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Anyone? Maya. Maya. <laughs> All right, guys, have a wonderful rest of your week.